What does it mean when I am saved? The Word of God through the Scriptures teach us of three levels of sanctification. By the grace of God, I will endeavour to elaborate on these levels so that your faith and my faith in Jesus Christ will be consolidated and grounded. For better comprehension of this presentation, please refer to the earlier teaching on the mystery of salvation. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Having spoken on the triune of us as human beings, we now want to focus on the Spirit. For every believer's spirit to grow, one has to be teachable. The Bible points to many instances of people asking to be enriched and be guided so that they grow in their spiritual journey in knowing and serving the Lord. We will know more about this as we move on. By definition, sanctification is one of the following. What does it mean when I am saved? The Word of God through the Scriptures teach us of three levels of sanctification. By the grace of God, I will endeavour to elaborate on these levels so that your faith and my faith in Jesus Christ will be consolidated and grounded. For better comprehension of this presentation, please refer to the earlier teaching on the mystery of salvation. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Having spoken on the triune of us as human beings, we now want to focus on the Spirit. For every believer's spirit to grow, one has to be teachable. The Bible points to many instances of people asking to be enriched and be guided so that they grow in their spiritual journey in knowing and serving the Lord. We will know more about this as we move on. By definition, sanctification is one of the following. A dedication, a consecration, or setting apart for some specific and holy use, or it is a cleansing and purging from moral defilement, that is to make pure or holy if not perfect. In this study it can be both the above if one is going into full-time ministry, but for the general calling of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10, the second one is more appropriate. For all believers, sanctification of the Spirit is categorized into three groups, positional sanctification, practical sanctification, and final sanctification. These categories can simply be explained in the same order as, I am saved, I am being saved, I shall be saved. Let us study each position in the Spirit carefully. Positional Sanctification When you and I give our lives to Jesus, the Spirit makes a bold statement to the spirit world about its position. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 is this statement of proclamation to the spirit world. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It is at this stage that you have made this announcement to enemy of God and all spiritual wickedness in high places. The position is based on the accomplished works of Christ, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is like you and I registering at school, college or university. The Institute has your name on the register of students and you and I can boast to be a member of the institution Egg Harvard or Oxford, but you cannot yet say that you are a graduate. This is the initial step we take in the spirit world and into the kingdom of God. We have taken a position to the spirit. Well done all who have done so and for those who are yet to. May grace abound to you. This leads to practical sanctification. We have just been saved, or put it as before, we were saved, registered. Practical sanctification. 
This is sometimes referred to as continuous sanctification. This is a progressive experience. It is the purification of spirit. The parameters are set out in Colossians chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. It is my responsibility as a child of God to respond to these. However, having been registered as a school, college or university, comes the coursework, the module, the curriculum, objectives. We begin to do work towards our goal. The institute begins to shape us in conformity of the coursework, the module or curriculum. This journey is for a stipulated time or season. Practical sanctification is the functional way that we live when we come to Jesus. To this we find illumination in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Spirit of God begins to lead and shape us so that we are conformed or aligned to the Word of God. The Spirit has got to be fed so that He can take control of the soul. The Spirit has got to be fed so that He can take influence of the soul. The Bible in Romans chapter 8, verse 14 commands us that, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. It is important to embrace this truth because none of us have met Christ in the flesh but in the Spirit. Practical sanctification is possible when we are teachable and obedient. You and I have to pray against having an offended spirit to be teachable. An offended spirit is one that tends to lash out at God instead of reverence like little children. Romans chapter 8 verse 13 For if you live according to the flesh you will die. But if you, by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Warfare between the Spirit and the body will always be there until Christ comes. But we are encouraged in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Final Sanctification It is sometimes known as future sanctification or complete sanctification. The final sanctification is complete glorification and resurrection of bodies. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 to 27 Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. When Jesus Christ returns on the second advent, all the living believers, living or dead, will be transformed and given glorified bodies. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. My friend, brothers and sisters, please note that our sanctification is not of our own effort. It is an act of God, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Personal commitment plays an integral part in sanctification. John chapter 15 verse 3 You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Believers must keep in mind that perfection in this life is impossible but it is not a license not to try. Philippians chapter 12, verse 13. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Blessings to you in Jesus' name. You are triune. 
The Bible teaches us that you and I are composed of three parts, according to Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. It is very clear that we are made up of the body, soul, spirit. This assertion is further supported in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is further consolidated in Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the hear. The spirit and soul are clearly identified, whereas the body is represented by joints and marrow. We will endeavor to explain the function of each part. Body, mine or your body, relates to the physical world, this world. This is in reference to sight, smell, hearing, taste, touch. And for the body's welfare, Jesus says that man shall not live by bread alone, according to Matthew 4 verse 4. We see that the body is a house that carries the spirit, as mentioned in Genesis 2 verse 7, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Soul The soul is the result of the spirit being breathed into the body, according to Genesis 2 verse 7, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. We will come back to explain the soul more after explaining the spirit. Spirit The spirit relates to the spirit world. In this case, as believers, it is the one that can relate to God because John 4 verse 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit and can only be related to in the spirit, hence the need for you and me to be born again. To be born again is to be regenerated in the spirit, so that we are reconciled to God, according to Romans 10 verses 9 to 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Regeneration happens to your spirit, not the body. It is in the spirit that we find faith, hope, reverence, prayer, worship. These things that we find in the spirit are non-functional in the body. For example, Faith is not in the body, but in the spirit. Jesus teaches us this in Matthew 4 verse 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Here it's clear, bread is for the body, and the word that proceeds from the mouth of God is for the spirit, the abode of faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. This is why Romans 10 verse 17 directs the word to the Spirit. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Ephesians 6 verse 16 In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The arrows of the evil one cannot be fought in the body or flesh sometimes referred to as carnality. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 For though we live in the world, 
We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Our weapons of warfare are in the spiritual realm and not in the flesh. I am convinced that this teaching has been helpful to you and that you will attend to your well-being with wisdom according to 3 John 2 verse 2. Dear friend, I am praying that all is well with you and that you enjoy good health in the same way that you prosper spiritually. Soul The soul is the mediator between the body and spirit. The soul is that realm created when God put the spirit in the body, according to Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The tug of war between the spirit and body takes place in the soul. The soul is the arena where the two clash. The soul follows the victor. The soul is the will. I think, I want, I will, reason, intellect, emotions, affections, memory, conscience, perversion. You and I as believers have to understand this. In the soul you find one's will, but when you and I come to the Lord, we have to deal with God's will. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 3-4 to For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honour. It is the soul that carries the will, the want of the body to fornicate. The spirit has to be fed with God's will until it overcomes or sways the body to its side. Constant feeding of the word makes the spirit the giant and takes command of the soul. 1 Peter 2 verse 15 For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. God's will in your spirit through the word of God is able to influence or alter your ego so that it will align with that of God. The memory is in the soul, that betrayal or that divorce, but the wounds manifest in the soul. The word heals the wounds and tames the soul on the betrayal or divorce because it's tailored to deal with such. The Maker of mankind, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have produced a manual, the Bible, to deal with the ups and downs of mankind. Isaiah 55 verse 11 So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The Word of God is there to deal with life's residue that is in the soul. I am convinced that this teaching has been helpful to you and that you will attend to your well-being with wisdom according to 3 John 2 verse 2. Dear friend, I am praying that all is well with you and that you enjoy good health in the same way that you prosper spiritually. It is your responsibility to feed your spirit man. Be faithful to your devotions, and your spirit will grow into a giant and have dominion over your soul and body.